And we're live for the 10th episode of the Unplugged Alpha. I almost said before the train wreck there. How about that? All right. Hey, check out what came out in the mail today. This thing must weigh at least 10 pounds. Look at that bad boy. That's the new camera setup that I'm going to run. And I have no idea how to set it up. I tried playing with it today and it's, I'm telling you, this is out of my pay grade. And if it doesn't work out, I can always use this as a weight. You know, we can get some bicep curls in here. <laughs> anyway, it takes great pictures, so it should do really good video once I figure out how to get it all set up. All right, last week we were talking about uh, saving the West or letting it burn. And uh, I invited people to hop on with their plans on how they were going to save the West. And we didn't really get too much. We didn't get too far. So... End of the, that show basically concluded, uh, yeah, you're wasting your time. Just let it kind of burn down. Uh, had a lot of hope. We had a lot of guys that were coming up with hope, like uh, there's going to be food shortages. You can take this approach. We had the uh, standard, uh, let's overthrow the conservative party and make them conservative again. Let's take women's voting rights away. People came up with all sorts of stuff, uh, but not a, but not backed by any kind of like, you know, actual strategy or plan. A lot of it was just hope-based. So, do me a solid. Uh, I got to try to stay on top of these uh, things, these tasks that I got to do to make sure that uh, algorithms like the show uh, head over to YouTube. So I'm just going to drop the link in uh, my StreamYard chat for all the platforms. So if you're over on the Facebooks, the Twitches, the Twitters and all that stuff, just hit that link. Do me a solid. Come on over. And when you do, hit the like button for the algorithms doesn't cost you anything be taking some call-ins today uh, i'm gonna do this monologue for i don't know 20 30 40 minutes whatever long it takes and then uh let's chop it up live with your questions so how do you enjoy the decline is what we're talking about here all right let's start with survival survival so do you guys have a survival plan i guess is the first thing right I remember when um, this whole beer bug thing kicked off a couple of years ago. I can't believe it's almost been two years now. It's going to be, what, two years in December, January? Two years I've been milking this mofo. Anyway, so beer bug kicks off a couple of years ago. And there was this like general feeling um, with most people and a lot of guys that I talked to that, um, you know, like this was like a shit hit the fan sort of event. That's what... That's what we were led to believe anyway. Like that's what we kept hearing. Um, people were <laughs> people were cleaning out the store shelves, and of all things, what did they clean out? Toilet paper, TP, TP, toilet paper. That's what that's what they cleared off the shelves. Not tin goods like beans, <laughs> not ammo, <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> that just goes to show you the state of the vast majority of the population and what they're thinking is if this if this beer bug hits do i have enough toilet paper to wipe my butt with that's what they're thinking so that just goes to show you how unprepared most of the population is cuz that's where their heads at they don't they don't think clearly it's like okay do you have food and water right you know do you have can you can you can you produce your own water do you have the ability to eat over a prolonged period of time couple months at least right i mean some people there's some serious preppers out there man like i've i've seen some serious preppers that have like bunkers stash with six months worth of tinned and pickled and and preserved food and they're just like they're ready for it man like they are going to be the most prepared during the decline of the west i don't think it's going to be an overnight thing for it to be an overnight thing it, it, it really has to be like a collapse of the financial system it has to be like a what do they call it in that movie? An extinction level event, L-E, E-L-E, -E, meteor, comet hitting the earth, you know, wiping out a good chunk of the population. But um, yeah, like we're mostly talking from the perspective here of how bad policies and the general theme of the Western population votes and decides to spend their time. And it's on dumb stuff, wokeness, rainbows, inclusivity for everybody have as many abortions as you want 
you know, never mind your personal freedom and choices. You know, it's it's my buddy, it's my buddy, my choice. If it's got to do with uh, terminating a pregnancy, but if you don't want to take a jab, then no, sorry, it doesn't count. You have to take a jab, otherwise you lose your job, right? So we talked about a lot of this stuff in the last show. I'm not going to go over it all, but if you want to see it, it's uh, the prior episode, uh, TUA number nine. You can go check it out. This stuff is available on podcast form too, so you can get it off. Uh, iTunes, Google Play, blah, 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 all that stuff. It's all out there. So you can listen to this too. Um, so survival really boils down to shelter and food would be the main things, all right? Thriving is a totally different thing, but we're talking about just basic shit, right? Food and shelter, food, water, and shelter. And most people don't have a plan for that, right? Like we take for granted that we get up and we have access to water that comes out of a faucet but what happens i mean if they're if they're jamming jabs down our throat right now what happens if they jam some new thing in the water system i mean fluoride in the water system ain't particularly good for you but they've been cramming that down our throats if you don't have a re reverse osmosis water filtration system or some kind of filtration system that gets rid of the crap that's in, in the city lines you're going to run into problems you want to talk about crap in the city lines? I had my water filters changed the other day in my system and it was black. It was like this shitty brown, burnt, like rust color. It was just nasty as shit. Survival matters, man. Most people don't have a plan for it. That's, you know, that's like a, you know, it's like a serious thing, you know? What happens if policing disappears? What happens if, um, you know, you don't have access to, safe reliable everything not a lot of people think about that you know they just they just believe that this is always going to be here they just believe that you know if your neighbor's house is on fire they're going to be able to pick up something like this and turn it on and it'll connect to a cell tower and then they can call a number where people will answer and say what can i do to help you and then send you know 30 brave men and a bunch of fire trucks with hoses to put the whole thing out you take that for granted right? What if that doesn't work? What if the cell tower doesn't work? What if there's no fire services? What if there's no policing? The thing that makes me laugh the most is when people are all just defund the police. Oh yeah. That's going to solve your problems today, isn't it? Defund the police. We don't need them. But that's, hey, listen, you know, the fact that you hear this stuff like this so often and Nobody like destroys it, like quashes it so quickly. Like, are you insane? Like, what are you thinking? Like, really? You want to get rid of policing? You want to defund the police? Really? You know, the fact that nobody says anything, again, it's telling. Telling of the times, right? So you have your survival sorted out. This isn't part of the enjoy part. I'm going to get to the enjoy part because, you know, the enjoy part is kind of interesting. <laughs> I, I got some black hat shit. <laughs> One, one of my guys came up with, and I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Aaron Cleary talked about one of his, um, what do you call it, Operation Evil or something like that, which is kind of tied into my buddy's black hat stuff. But um, yeah, I'll go over that too. Anyway, location. Listen, if you want to enjoy the decline, being in a urban coastal city, Toronto, New York, LA, Chicago's on a big ass lake, you know, all of, like all of these large urban coastal like six 10 12 million people living in these cities i mean there's cities out there that have more than that too obviously but you get the idea like is is that where like how you, like a place that you're gonna enjoy the decline you don't have the ability to maneuver show me your paperwork if you want to come into this restaurant and sit down show me your paperwork if you want to watch a movie in the theater you know what's it going to be next you know make sure your paperwork's updated with stamps for all your daily pills that pfizer you know is going to make you take sort of thing right so you want some flexibility and freedom it ain't going to come from large urban centers okay there's i'm just going to say it because i because i've noticed it because i hold real estate in downtown toronto there's an exodus of people leaving large cities the smart ones have either exited or they're planning an exit hey you know, these, these are the smart people, right? They're, you know, they're the leaders. There's a reason why the moves are, are being made for those personal freedoms. You're not going to get it in an urban city, right? Location does matter. Government in location matters too. Everybody talked about my plan 
to exit. I don't know if it's going to be permanent or on a part-time basis. Canada find a place that's more, I don't I don't have to deal with the wokeness. I don't have to deal with the incredibly high tax rates. I don't have to deal with the cold ass winners. I don't have to deal with, you know, all of that stuff. Or I, or if I do have to deal with it, it's on a very limited basis, right? There's places in the Caribbean with very low or if no tax rates, there's, there's places around the world that, you, you know, exist like that. There's places where they don't entertain wokeness, you know, freaking. Justin Trudeau gave a speech in the last couple of weeks. Some of you may have heard of it. I'm sure many of you didn't hear it because a lot of you live outside of the, the country. But he said something like, we need to come out of this she session for the she economy. Doesn't say economy, doesn't say recession. It's all about the wokeness and trying to lean into all the nonsense. So if you're finding yourself in an environment where the location doesn't allow you to enjoy the decline you're not you're not tied down there right um i did a cast with this guy david lesperance and it was on my plane to win series in the last few months you can go back and check it out um you can just search on my channel entrepreneurs and cars and then david lesperance and he's a uh, he's a former lawyer that specializes in relocating uh individuals high net worth individuals you know specifically uh right now anyway uh, to other locations in the world where their tax rates are more favorable, they're treated better, you know, they can get basically what they want in their life. And there's a lot of things that, that came out of that. One of the things that really stood out is your is your assets don't need to be where your ass is, right? So, I mean, you can live somewhere and have your assets in another country. Um, there's, there's lots of things to consider. Having more than one passport is a, a really good idea. Uh, we talked about that during that show in detail, so you can check that out on why. Um, but yeah, your, your location is, it's not fixed guys. You know, this is not, you know, 20,000 years ago where, you know, you couldn't hop on a plane or get in a car and drive, you know, I mean, fricking a car, you can drive almost thousand kilometers a day easily, right? Comfortably, you know, for the most part, um, hopping on a plane, you can cover a lot more than that way quicker boats too. I mean, you know, not, not quite as quick, obviously, but you have the ability to maneuver. So don't think for a second that just because you live somewhere that you need to be there for the rest of your life. If you think that it doesn't serve you, you can move on. Yeah. The she economy, the balance sheet balances itself. Trudeau, we've got an election coming out soon. Can't wait for this one to wrap up. Hopefully we get rid of this clown. Boy, oh boy. So location, we talked about that. What about income? So Actually, I got a bunch of uh, guys that drop questions on the community tab of my channel. So I'm going to throw those up in the screen in a bit. But one of the things that I really wanted to talk about was income. Um, there's a lot of guys right now that have messaged me um, talking about how their jobs are threatened. And they feel like they either have to take the jab or they're not going to have work. Okay. In some cases, they're not even firing people. They're, they're just saying, if you don't do what we tell you to do, we're not going to give you work, right? So if you're like working for an organization where they get sent out on jobs, if you haven't ticked off their boxes, they're not going to give you the job. So they're not going to fire you. They're just not going to give you work to do. So it's effectively the same thing. And a lot of these guys, some of them, you know, work for police forces, fire services, uh, medical services. Uh, you know, the frontline guys that we were all praising, oh, we praise our frontline workers, you know, all of that, you know, <laughs> circus that we did a couple of years ago when the beer bug kicked off. Now, all of a sudden, these guys are nobodies. It's take the jab or lose your job. And it's it's hilarious to me because, I mean, the narrative that you hear all the time is, oh, the oh, the ICUs are overwhelmed and, you know, we have to take the jab to, you know, save the ICUs from being overwhelmed. And it's like, you know, and then the next breath and they want to fire like 25 percent of their staff just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. I mean, are you guys cluing in here yet or is it just me? Income is real important. So how do you protect your ability to earn in whatever currency it is that you decide to earn in? You know, you can earn in fiat, you can earn in crypto, you can become self-employed. There's barter systems out there, of course. Um, you know, I was watching this um, in-depth. Um, how can I put this? You know, if you're you know familiar with the Amish or the Mennonites, you see them around, you know, in rural country with their, um, you know, horse and buggies. 
And the funny thing is, is they're probably the best position automatically, believe it or not, to enjoy this decline. Um, they don't have access to any outside information for the most part, depending on how conservative or liberal their structure is. But for the most part, they don't drive. They don't have cell phones. They don't have radios or TV. None of this stuff impacts them. They don't deal with the wokeness. They don't deal with any political influence. All they really do is pay some taxes. They don't even bother voting. Because to them, you know, the highest uh, order for them is their own religion. So, um, you know, it's funny because when I was watching, I was thinking, damn, man, these guys got it set up so that not a lot in the outside world can potentially bother them that much unless they show up and they start cramming stuff down their throat. And they're going to have to deal with that uh, problem as well. So, you know, your income, you know, you got to have the ability to barter, you know, because all that because all that money is, is just a, a um, it's just a storage of, of value. It's just a store of value really, you know, is all that it boils down to. Cause you go back, you know, 10, 20,000 years ago, there was, I mean, as, as a Cooper, my last name basically meant barrel maker. Okay. So anybody in the UK that had the last name made barrels. And then, you know, you'd of course have Smiths, you know, you'd have blacksmiths and stuff like that and stuff. And there'd be people that would farm chickens and cows and hay and freaking, you know, bar make barrels and stuff like that. And then they would barter, you know, with one another. But the problem was, was that in those days, like a barrel's good for a long time. You can make a barrel sit there. It's good. But your harvest of perishables isn't. So the question, you know, then came up, well, how do you store value in something that has been created? And they started using things like gold and silver and precious metals and stuff like that. And we switched over to paper money. And you now we're starting to move over to uh, cryptos, right? The pivot is happening. So... That's all that money is, is a store of value. So you need to be able to have access to value to, to exchange it for stuff, right? Real estate, transportation, housing, you know, shelter, food, whatever that may be. So a lot of guys, you know, like I said earlier, they're they're about ready to lose their freaking jobs, right? I mean, there's guys here in the chat right now. I know one of them that, you know, has been threatened, take the jab or you're losing your job, right? So how do you preserve that? You know, do you want to keep working for woke corporations? Because it, it's, it's, hey, listen, I'm probably older than a lot of the audience that watches my stuff. There's some guys that are even older than me. I, you know, I realize that. But for the most part, when I was 20, none of this stuff existed. There was no quotas, agendas, wokeness, none of this stuff. It was just, hey, you come to work, you do your job, you get paid. We'll do the Christmas party. We'll do the summer barbecue. We'll have the watermelon eating contests and all that sort of stuff and everybody gets paid in there you know they go on happy go lucky but we're actually in a position now if you want to enjoy the decline you got to figure out a way to preserve your income right because if you're going to rely on some dude that's woke as well that's feeding the you know the the, the uh, fed narrative you know the state narrative cramming it down your throat and you don't want to do something they say oh if you don't do this you know if you don't wear this pink pussy hat or something like that we're gonna fire you what are you gonna do you're gonna keep bending over taking it all the time you gotta figure out a way to make sure that your income's good you know you gotta enjoy that decline best way in my view to do that is entrepreneurship that's been my chosen path i mean i left the corporate world 17 18 years ago i have not <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm working on getting this thing called the tn visa for for travel and uh, one of the things they asked me was for my, pa not for my passport, but for my CV, for my resume. <laughs> I just laughed. I'm like, I have not been employed for a long time. I do not have a resume or a CV, right? So, you know, we had to hop on a call and talk about that with one of the partners there. But uh, yeah, you got you to gotta make sure your income sorted out, guys. You want to enjoy that decline, you got to make sure you have a steady source of income. And the most powerful thing that you can do is not rely on somebody else there's a lot of guys right now like i said about 25 percent of the work workforce approximately somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of the workforce right now is afraid to lose their job in many places in the west canada especially i know it's starting to happen in the u.s and they're really pissed off about it and and they're left with this decision do i do i breach my values and yield or what like what's the next option so how do you enjoy that decline in that environment, right? I mean, maybe five, like one of the things I would be asking potential employers right now is what their position is on certain things. 
right? Especially if they're trying to poach you from another company. Like if they're trying to steal you from another company and they're trying to lure you lure you into their business, find out what kind of business that's being run, right? Who runs the show? What's it all about? What's their value system? Is it something that's going to allow me to enjoy my decline, right? Good questions to ask, right? You know, it's the same sort of thing. Like I put out on Twitter in the last week, I said something like, I'm not going to get into any business dealings or partnerships with anybody on a go forward basis that's vaccinated themselves because they're too gullible for me to trust. That's what it boils down to for me. So ask yourself questions like that, right? You got to take a look at that. I know, I know there's a lot of people watching this right now that probably have been vaccinated. They're like, I just did it. I didn't want to do it, but I just did. I've talked to a lot of guys just, you know, I don't want to get fired. I, I got a family to feed. I don't know, man. How do you enjoy how do you enjoy yourself in that environment? It's a question you got to ask, right? What are you going to use to store value? Cryptocurrency is great for that. I know some guys don't like it. Oh, it's going to go to zero. It's going to go to zero, Rich. Yeah, we've been saying that for how many years now? 11 years. Keeps going up. You know, you compare it side side to side to any other store of value or you know, market and it just destroys it. So I don't know what, like three, three percent of the world population uses crypto. I don't know what the percentage is that has gold or silver. I mean, I got gold and silver too, but cryptocurrency to me seems like it's, it's going to be the obvious winner. What are you going to store value in? You know, you got to figure that out too, right? Make sure you got that thing. And, and I wouldn't put it all in one place. Like I see people pile it all into real estate. I see people pile, I see people pile it all into one token on the blockchain. There's, there's idiots out there that brag. Like there's this one guy, uh, I think they call him the Dogecoin millionaire. And he looks exactly how you think he would look. And, you know, he's going on about how he piled all of his money into Dogecoin and made a couple million dollars off it, or it's, it's worth a couple million dollars. He hasn't made it yet because I believe he's holding, he's not selling it. But again, don't put it all in one place. You got to diversify that shit, spread it out, right? Put it into things, you know, that that can be moved, that that are good stores of value, that are that are that are gonna hold or appreciate in value in the future. Like there's like there's gonna be a demand for it. Okay. So pay attention though. I mean, you want to enjoy the decline? Make sure you have stores of value and currency that's useful. What about self-care? How about stop eating shit and not sleeping and staring at, you know, 16 hours of screens, you know, throughout your day? How about exercise and how about getting some freaking sunlight, right? Moving, making sure when you get out the shower, you look down, you can see your Johnson and your toes and you're not looking at a big ass belly, right? How do you enjoy a environment of wokeness and nonsense if you're living in an unhealthy body? And they, and they want to force you to take shit that really your own immune system can solve. I'll be honest with you guys. Last summer, there was like three, four days, maybe three and a half days. I had some Wagyu steak, big chunk like this. And by day two, I could not taste the meat. Had no flavor whatsoever. Then I lost my smell. I'm pretty sure I had COVID for those three days. Guess what? Immune system, boom, done. Right? Self-care. You don't need all of this crap. You don't need all these jabs and all this bullshit medicine. For the most part, it's just take care of yourself, right? Eat good food. Take the basic vitamins that you need. Stop drinking fizzy sugar drinks, right? Just basic stuff. You'd think it would be basic and it would be known, but it's like, I don't, I don't get, man, half these people I see when I go out there. I'll tell you this, man. There's always a direct correlation between what somebody looks like and what they put on the conveyor belt at the grocery store. Always. You cannot escape that. Play that game the next time you go to the grocery store at checkout and look at the person and then look at what's on the conveyor belt. There's always a direct correlation. Uh, Mackin, thanks, man. Appreciate the super. Ray, if someone isn't able to pay off a house quickly, would it be better to not buy a house to be free of debt? Oh, man, housing. How do you, okay, so let's so let's hit this from the angle of housing during the decline. How do you enjoy the decline and housing? Okay, well, first of all, stop like first of all, stop believing that you need to buy a house. You don't need to buy a house. And in some places in the world, it's not a great place to park your money. 
in Canada, you know, for a long time, you would not pay capital gains on any appreciated value on housing. Well, guess what? Our buddy Justin Castro is working on right now. He's trying to pass a bill that would allow them to tax the capital gains on your principal residence. So what's the incentive in buying a half million dollar house when you got to pay a huge amount of taxes on it when you sell it? And trust me, if they pass it and they start taxing, it's not going to be 100% tax. It's going to be something like 20 or 30%, let's say. Because you know they try to they try to ease it in. They try to you know it's, it's like when they jam the knife and they put it in slowly, so you so you probably don't feel it, and they just keep going. So it's going to be you know thirty years down the road when the tax rate keeps increasing. You let them start, they're going to keep going. That's just the way that it works. So you know how do you enjoy the decline, paying huge amount? Like taxes are a big expense. I don't know if you guys like really pay attention when you put gas in your car, when you go to the store, when you earn your income from your paycheck, when you're paying your property taxes on your house. <clears throat> the thing is, is they just bury it in everything. They bury it as a sales tax, as a fuel tax. When you pay your property taxes, a lot of time it's just buried into your mortgage payment so you don't really notice it. You only start to notice these things when you pay attention to them. And that's a very expensive cost. So one of the things that you should be looking, a better question is how do you minimize your tax liabilities? All right. The government's stealing money from you while you're going through the decline, right? You want to enjoy the decline. You need access to a store of value somewhere. Why, you, why do you keep giving it away to a organization or an entity out there that thinks they know everything, is irresponsible with it, and is going to spend it on dumb woke shit that you probably don't agree with that's contributing to more of the decline? They're basically stealing money from you to finance the decline. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying here? Think about that for a second. Think outside of the box. Okay, so stop crossing your T's, dotting your I's, and coloring, you know, within the lines and thinking within the box. Start thinking at least outside of the box. There was there was a great story that I heard about um, Steve Jobs. I think it was um, uh, not Robert Kiyosaki, Guy Kawasaki, that guy, because he was one of the first employees. I saw him at an event. We chatted for a bit. And one of the things that they were saying about Steve Jobs is he didn't even see the box. Inside of the box thinking, outside of the box thinking, not, not even seeing the box thinking. That's where you get creative. Try to get outside of the box. Stop thinking about conventional shit. Like if someone isn't able to buy a house quickly, would it be better not to buy a house and be free of debt? How about, is a house a good idea? What, is my, what are my liabilities going to be to that? You're going to also tie yourself down to that location. So you buy yourself a house in a location that you may not potentially want to live in in five or 10 years, why would that be a good move? It would be better off to rent, right? You got to think about these things, man. You know, set yourself up. Bigger, bigger thinking. Uh, super, thank you for that. I'm good looking. I'm good looking and make good money in IT crypto, but I'm in a wheelchair. I'm done with fetish caretakers. Any tips? Fetish caretakers. Um... <laughs> you know, Josh was in my community for a while and like you, he was in a wheelchair. He's, you know, he's in a wheelchair, but he's not mobile um, at all. Like he's basically, he can move his hand a little bit. He seems to have figured out a way to enjoy things. Um, you just have to surrender to what you can control and what you can control. I think that's probably one of the biggest things is just, ah, you know, this is where I'm at. So what can I control? Um Fetish caretakers is an interesting thing because that's not the first time I've heard that. I've heard a few stories where guys are like, basically, I mean, how can I put this? I'm going to try to water this down for the YouTubes. You know, they're basically getting it on with their caregivers or something like that. So this whole fetish caretaker thing, <laughs> hey man, enjoy the decline. You know, if that's their thing, you know, if that's their kink, enjoy it. Have some fun with it. Who cares? Great content. Live in Toronto. Thinking of moving to Cyprus. Yeah, I think Cyprus has a lot of uh, tax benefits. It's one of the better countries in the Mediterranean. Yeah, low tax, uh, low tax rate. Greek. I think it's Greek Turkish still, if I'm not mistaken. My mom uh, lived in uh, Cyprus for a good part of her youth too. She had an aunt there. 
Never been. Been to a bunch of Greek islands, but never been to Cyprus. I got to put on the list. Pull a Jeremiah Johnson and become a mountain man. Never heard of that guy. Don't know. Um, yeah, like, you know, when you talk about the concept of like the mountain man, very similar to what I was talking about earlier with the, um, you know, the Amish, the Mennonites, you know, sort of thing is they're kind of the same way. Like they're just off the grid. Nothing really affects them. Like none of, not a lot of political policies affect them aside from any tax obligations that they might have. And that's it. Like unless the government shows up at their front porch and tries to tax them on their horse and buggy or something like that, or take their horse and buggies away, um, it doesn't really affect them much. So that's why I was saying earlier, I mean, you want to enjoy the decline being in a large urban center where there's a lot of controls in place for transportation, for housing, um, you know, for all your amenities and stuff, all in a, a tight area that is is basically governed by the federal government, the pro the provincial or state government, and also a mayor, you've got all these layers of, of shit that is going to be imposed on your life, which gives you a lot less freedom and flexibility. Also, these large urban centers are, are, are generally typical, very socialized and, you know, very like, uh, like follow like a liberalism sort of value system, right? So if you want to get out of that, which a lot of it contributes to the decline, if you want to enjoy, move away from places that aren't aligned with your beliefs, right? Do, do, do. Andrew, 20 bucks. Thanks, bro. For me personally, the only way I'm going to enjoy the decline is just stay on my purpose, chase excellence, and live a healthy lifestyle, vet people carefully, ignore the woke mob, and like you said to me once, let it burn. And listen, when I say ignore, you know, like the woke mob, uh, vetting people, you know, healthy lifestyle, all that sort of stuff, let me just share a quick story. So I was on a walk I don't know, it was like a month ago, I think. And um, they were just starting to talk about the vaccination and imposing um, vaccine passports. The idea was starting to come up. And there was four of us, you know, on a stroll. And there was these like woke looking, you know, like typical purple haired, you know, tatted up, sleeve tatted sort of, you know, <laughs> woke mob sort of people. And they're walking behind us. And we're just kind of strolling along, having conversations about all this. And as they pass us, like this, the, uh, you know, the bigger one, she turns around and she's like, well, I hope you don't get it or nobody else gets it. And just kind of pulls like a Karen for about five to seven seconds. And I just said, you know what? Why don't you just shut up and mind your own business? Okay. So when I say ignore the woke mob, ignore them. But if they try to impose crap on, on you and they, and they try to like flick their boogers at you sort of thing, let them know what you think. Okay, just let them know what you think. That's all I'm saying. That's part of enjoying it, right? Just get it off your chest. I'm not the one with the fetish, buddy. It's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> Brainstormed over last video. Could have a solution. Marcel, you're more than welcome to call in. Uh, here, I'll, let me get the link so you guys can start piling in. Um, i got a few more things to cover. But um, yeah, you guys can probably start to pile in now. So I'm only dropping the link over on YouTube and because I got to pin it up over there. So if you want to uh, call in on the show and contribute or if you have a solution maybe to this, you know, let's hear it. Uh, do, 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 do. Come in and ask a question. So I'll just pin that up to the top. It's just a StreamYard link. And there you go. It's pinned to the top. So you can click that at any time. Uh, brainstorm last video. Yep. Oh, before we do that, talk about tribe and women. So there's two more things that I want to cover. One tribe, your tribe matters. You're going to have to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with like absolute awesomeness. If you want to enjoy the decline of the West as it spirals out of control, you're gonna need to have a good group of people around you. Okay. You're going to be the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So make sure that you pick people that are competent, skillful. They're fun to be around. They're resourceful. They're great at problem solving skills. You know, they can see through the bullshit basically. Um, and it doesn't have to be a large, you know, tribe. It, it can be five, six people. It doesn't have to, it could be immediate family. It could be a combination of immediate family and friends. It could be friends. Um, there's this guy that I go to the gun club with and, uh, you know, hit clays and stuff. And we've talked many times in the past about putting together some kind of contingency plan. If the shit ever hits the fan, 
And, you know, there's a group of guys that are competent enough to, you know, pool our resources, have each other's back and be successful in, in an environment that might go completely sideways. I'm not saying that the decline is going to be a sideways event, but to me, it's like death by a thousand paper cuts. Like that's basically what the decline looks like. It's death by a thousand paper cuts. So make sure you've got a tribe that you can rely on that's in your corner. I should talk about women too, because that's one of the big things that a lot of you guys keep asking about is chicks in your lives. Um, Marcel, I see you there, bro. I'm going to pull you in in a few minutes. Okay, let me just finish this monologue bit. Don't go anywhere yet because I want to hear your solution. Um, when it comes to women, look, there's arm's length and then there's your inner circle. If you want to roll with arm's length, okay, with some of the woke mob, you know, like anything that might be contributing to the decline, hey, I'm not going to fault you for that. You know, you do you, but make sure it's arm's length. Don't put babies in them. Don't move them in. Don't play Captain Save a Ho. Don't do any of that stuff. It's mental point of origin first. Is this good for me? How does this serve me? And if you're going to deal with women and invite them on the inside of the perimeter to come in, okay, depending on what capacity you want, make sure she's a complement to your life, not the focus. She doesn't complicate it. She makes your life easy. Okay. That's what, that's what you want. If you're going to invite a chick into it, right? I mean, there's a lot to unpack with women. I mean, if you haven't already my book as it's titled, like the podcast playlist, the unplugged alpha, get it on Amazon, listen to it. It's on audible, get the print. You can read it and, you know, highlight it and pass it around to your buddies, or it's also available on Kindle. And if you're in a country, I get guys that mess with me all the time. I'm in this country and I can't get Amazon. No problem. Uh, there's a website called bookdepository.com. You can order it there. They just they kind of act as a brokerage for shipping. Or you can go to Gumroad and uh, pinned in the top comment of all my videos or on any of my social media on the link tree. Um, I uploaded a PDF to Gumroad. It's like $9.99, same price as uh, Kindle. Great resource there for all you guys. I have a fiance. She's cool, but extremely disrespectful. I would stop right. I'm going to keep reading, but... This is this is full dismissal from there, right? You guys love to complicate your life and justify why. So let's find out why he's justifying this one. She was there to help me get my visa. Now it's to the point if visa even is the visa even worth it is what he's saying. What should I do? Mom says leave, friends say stay and hustle her. I would love your advice. <laughs> I don't know where you live, dude. Uh Miguel, I'm assuming that you're Spanish and in, in the States. So let's just use that assumption. Um are you closer to the finish line than you are the start line? Then carry on. But I would not spend a minute longer than I would have to with a disrespectful woman. I've been around disrespectful women. I've allowed them to be disrespectful to me. And you get out of life what you tolerate, guys. Okay, so don't forget that. You are, you're always going to get out of life what you tolerate. You know, you're going to tolerate bitchiness and disrespectfulness. Guess what? That's your future, my friend. That is what you're going to get for the rest of your life. More of that compounded 10 X. So you want to deal with that? Deal with it. Just understand that you've complicated your life and you've justified why, or you can unplug from that. Okay. Again, get the book guys, the unplugged alpha. You can unplug from it and move past it. Move past that shit. All right. Um, let me grab my headphones so I can hear what Marcel's got to say. He says he's got a solution he brainstormed on. All right, what do we got here? All right, let's do this. What do you got for me, buddy? Yo, what's up? Quickly, uh, I know I'm off topic, but thanks anyways. Um, so I missed it and kind of brainstorms took a couple of notes, um, mainly because it was a fun problem. This is so, this is a solution to yes, the decline. Yes, solution like you you to the decline, it. yeah. Okay, go. Let's hear it. So... Um, the, the problem stems from the bottom up, right? It's the same with the denial and the red pill. That basically, it's very hard for um, existing people to to solve the problem. So you would want new um, people. That's the same thing that you see with Exhibit A, where the people voting, they don't know what the fuck they're doing, right. like very small amount. So what you can do is make the kids um, smarter, right? And um, what I was thinking is that if um, if we have like someone who's alpha red pill and pretty wealthy 
so they could start a school. But also a very good start is already what you guys are doing. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. Because I mean, we got yeah. a, a couple of things there to unpack. So you, you're saying make kids smarter. Yeah, so basically. Problem, okay, so one of the problems that we have with that, though, is that the public school system, which most children are in now, probably 90, 95% of kids in the school system are in the public school system, which the government runs. They set the curriculum. They set all the mandates. And almost all of the teachers are female and they're of course liberalized and of course, you know, selling all of this woke rainbow politically correct stuff. Um, I mean, schools have three bathrooms now here. Like, I don't know where you live, but schools here have three bathrooms. There's male, female, and then there's undecided. I'm, I'm just calling it like <laughs> undecided because that's really what it is. It's like, you know, they can't really figure out what, what gender or, or pronoun they want to use. So they use that bathroom, right? This shit did not exist when I was in school. This is like mm. brand new, like manufactured stuff, okay? And we're the only species on the planet that does weird shit like this. No other species does this. We're the only one that, that have so much time in our hands that we say, you know what? Instead of having a guy's bathroom and a girl's bathroom, let's do the undecided one in case you think you're a fairy today, right? So that's how they roll. But all of that influence comes to almost all of the kids by way of the state. So how do you, how do you fix that? Yeah. Because so I thought parents, because parents like used to have a nuclear family, like mom would stay home, take care of the kids, dad would go out and go to work. And then the government figured out, well, we can double our, ta like our, uh, tax revenue if we get women into the workforce. And then we started having this narrative, like you go girl, you're strong and independent. You don't need no man, all that sort of shit. And divorces skyrocketed and more women went into the workforce and they started paying lots of taxes. So then kids, cause women still want to have kids need to be looked after by someone. So rather than homeschooling them, you don't have that option. They have to go to the public school system or in daycare. So how do you fix that? Like, you know, start with that. Yeah. So what I was thinking there is there's some prerequis uh, prerequisites, whereas um, the families that could do this are maybe wealthier, but there's also a solution to that. So um, well, I mean, then if, you're talking the top five percent, maybe like two percent um, of the world population. That's in the lot. beginning, in the beginning, yes. So if, but if we get someone who is wealthy enough who? to who? to make it who? Uh, cheap, who? Well, I'm not saying I know a specific person, and I'm I don't okay, know so exactly. Okay, so that raises another problem. So let me just explain that to you. Okay. Most billionaire entrepreneurs, you know, the guys that you're describing, yeah. are are betas. Right, like they're like yeah, exactly. Betas, okay, yeah. So, Warren Buffett is he an alpha or is he a beta? It's probably a beta, I guess. Right. Elon Musk is he a beta? He's or is he a super beta. Holy, I was so fucked because I like the guy. Je Je yeah. yeah, right. You know, like me too. Uh, Jeff Bezos, you know the guy from and Amazon. Yeah, also man, you know, Jesus. Yeah. He basically dumped his wife for some secondhand dirty Sanchez, right? Like yeah. <laughs> like what are you thinking, bro? Yeah, like, um, well, I can keep going down the list, right? Like all of these, ver like you know, Bill Gates, like dudes as beta looking as he comes, right? Like he's plugged, like you know, he's 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 on the news telling people to get vaccinated, right? So all of these billionaires that have all of this wealth, they're not red pilled, you know, unplugged, you know, successful alpha males. They're all plugged in betas, very mm -hmm. successful plugged in betas. Okay, very very yeah. successful, in fact, and they also drive the decline narrative. Right. So which one of these guys is going to pony up for, you know, let's just call it the TRP school of life. Yeah. Um, so, well, if you would like to get like huge changes that that could maybe be a billionaire. But I think as long as let's say we get like 10 millionaires around the world, which is even beneficial, maybe even start online because I was thinking, OK, probably the best way to learn is in person. But we have a thing called YouTube, which is probably the future of learning, where uh, self-learners like me, because I, I look at myself as self-learner, if those guys start acting, and the first thing that we need to do is, like, I always check the source of the information. Mm -hmm. Like, if you would be uh, poor and fat and whatever, I mm -hmm. probably wouldn't listen to you. But you're not that. Right. So if we can teach kids, like, all right, this teacher does that, like, 
bam, 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 then we can uh, have good sources of information and slowly start doing that. And if all the guys watching, like we have a thousand people, their kids start doing that and their kids start doing that, maybe like 50, 150 years down the line, we can have a slow progress. But it didn't take us one day to get here and didn't it won't take us one day to get over yeah, this. As well. Yeah, I know. But I mean, like the thing is, is that is that you're relying on a lot of up in the air variables, which I don't see. Um, coming to fruition if i can be yeah, honest with you be. yeah I, could you know, well I can't be. see you know the government a lot like relinquishing control of the school system and it like it's not educating sh children today it's indoctrinating children today <laughs> it is yeah i'm just yeah, being yeah. honest <laughs> because i've got a kid in the school system and it's like the amount of work that i have to do to undo a lot of the lies and narratives that 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 get thrown it's it's pretty considerable right like no. when i was a kid i'd come home from school and i would practice the times tables you know with my parents because that was part of the curriculum i'm having conversations about why you would assume somebody's gender with my kid yeah yeah right it's, it, it's completely yeah it's, she doesn't know how to do the times tables yet no. right but like you know conversations like that or you know the option for the undecided bathroom you know exists like these are the topics of of conversation there's really like I love that everybody's like, okay, I think that, you know, we have possible, you know, solutions here. Let's overtake this government. Let's do this. Let's change that. Let's, but all of these things, you know, rely on a big paradigm shift, which I don't see happening, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, why I'm so... just like, Hey, you know what? Oh, I'm going to talk to you guys about, about this operation, um, that a guy in my group came up with, which I think ties into Aaron Cleary's operation evil. Once I get off with Marcel, what else do you got for me on that? Do you got anything else you think that's you know, um, potentially well, viable? Like, what's the best thing that you got there? Yeah, well, I think the the YouTube part because if and 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 the the basic concept of that it will take time. And I'm not trying to like what really save the West and everything. I, like mm -hmm. I agree with all the things that you say. I'm kind of like trying to make the best of a worse situation, and it's a fun, it. uh, challenging thing. So YouTube. Uh, more and more people start listening and then teach their children slowly surely we can make the best out of this situation that was uh basically my uh, solution yeah hopefully it made more sense than the previous well, I mean, like you said something earlier like why would i trust you if i didn't see you as you know successful and you know put together but yeah, yeah. a good chunk of the population is is like watching youtube content like brain dead youtube content um and in many cases without a verifiable source right like a, a lot of mm -hmm. these content creators are are just doing voiceover stuff you have no idea what they look like right like they could be yeah. 400 pound neck bearded you know tomato farmer living, living with their, with their yeah, mother tomato, <laughs> yeah whatever you, you know what i'm saying right like yeah. you know like we started to yeah. see some of this stuff but they have a lot of people's attention right yeah so it is there's really it is. a lot of battles out there you know it was really the point that i was driving at last week and also what i'm driving at here is like you've you know you've got a lot of battles out there to fight and it's like okay well pick a hill to fight on right because yeah. there's a lot of them out there or it's like i can just fucking walk away from all of you hills over there and i'm going to go and set up my own hill over here right and that's why i make the point of well you know if if you see the writing on the wall then just enjoy what it is that you can control, which is within, you know, the scope of your own life, right? Because, I mean, you'll go mental. Like, everything that you ticked off, there, okay, all of those might be, you know, good ideas and potential solutions. But, again, it's a massive hill that, that you need to take away from the other side to get your way to work. Yeah, yeah. Basically, eating an elephant. You don't do it in one bite. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, it's... And the question is whether you should eat the elephant as well. Like, right. I'm I'm probably more on the camp of uh, doing my thing, you know, mental point of origin and making the most out of my life and trying Got influencing uh, people. But yeah, that's that is my uh, solution for the okay, most part. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, thanks, bro. Yeah, you're welcome. See you, man. All right, um, guys, do me a favor. That like those of you that are waiting in the, uh, I guess we'll call it the green room to get in, ask a question, and chop it up. Just in the private chat, let me know what you, what it is that you want to talk about, so I can help sort through it. And if you want to hop on, you just got onto the show or you click through pinned in the top comment or pinned in the top live of the um, live chat is a link there that you can click to do that. So just make sure you've got a good connection to headphones. Um, so there was something I made a note on over here. 
So this is kind of black hat stuff. This is like tied into enjoying the decline and actually profiting, profiting from it nicely, which actually ties into the income part of it. So picture this. Um, one of my guys cooked this idea up, so I'm just going to kind of rip it a little bit. Uh, make a list of the things that plugged in women do and like, is what he says. And that's where you can make a lot of money. Sell them on their lies and delusions. Anti-age supplements, egg freezing, degrees, self-help material, how to, how to land a high value man. Uh, he says, not only is there a profit, but they will shield you from the law and make excuses for you because they are doing that for themselves. You can see how this is like some black hat shit, right? Uh, he also talks about minimizing material possessions, becoming a digital nomad if you work in tech. Uh, early stage of scouting, escape route, and setting up financial channels to sustain that life file. Um, don't try not to own too much shit that you don't need. I I, I just sold my R eight. Um, you know, the other day I I've got two. Or I had two supercars in my garage. I found myself almost never driving the R eight. The seven twenty renders it. I mean, it's silly to say this because the R eight's a rapid car, and I posted this on um, Instagram today, but. The 720 renders it slow and incompetent, you know, believe it or not. And because I found myself not driving it, I was like, okay, well, the market's up. I've made some money on it. Might as well sell it and, you know, make some space for some other things. I'm starting to offload some other holdings that I have. So I don't have other obligations and tie down. So that's a good point that he made there. But to the, to the point of the black hat sort of stuff, it's kind of funny, right? Like he's not wrong, you know, sell sell cat food, cat grooming, dog grooming, dog walking services. Cause, because like <clears throat> all of these plugged in people out there that are contributing to the decline are all going to go to work, pay their taxes, uh, because they follow what the state tells them to do while you can go and profit from, you know, the choices that, you know, they've made. I don't need no man choices. You're beautiful at any, uh, you know, look, weight, height, whatever. Um, you know, You've heard the narratives because we've talked about a lot of them. A lot of you guys have called in and expressed grievances with them over the hundred plus episodes that I've been doing through the series with before the train wreck and now the unplugged alpha. So you know what the problems are. There's a way that you could profit from it, right? I mean, men make most of the money, but women somehow spend most of the money into the economy. So why not sell them something and profit along the way through the decline? You know, is an excellent point. It's just it's just something to contemplate, right? Uh, I'm just going to read this up on the screen here. So Gavin says, my kids are in elementary school. I'm white of a sort of, and my ex-wife is not. My kids had developed a shame and anger towards their white half of themselves. When my smallest guy was in grade two, he made a comment about the white race, and I told him that it's wrong to be ashamed of his half and you to be proud of himself. His response exactly is that's racist. Imagine a grade two kid talking like this. My children have been brainwashed by the public school system. They have no idea how to accept, defeat, and improve. Yeah, they see, in one of the red flags in my book, in the uh, red flag chapter, and here, I'll put up the banner in case you're not on my email list because you can get it for free. It's just there below. Um, one of the red flags is um, people that are unhappy and unlucky, those that, that, that are perpetually victims, you know, in their life. And... Like the last caller mentioned, you know, with the, one of the problems is with the educational system, indoctrinating children, not educating them, but indoctrinating them with certain beliefs that aren't useful to success and independence and freedom. They're teaching schools, as the last guy just experienced, or, or sorry, that schools are teaching your kids to be a victim. To And if they teach you a victim mindset, then you have to have an oppressor, which means there has to be a bad guy because in order to be a victim, there has to be a bad guy, you know, to, 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 to like hold you down, you know, keep you under the thumb sort of thing. So how does that work, right? Like, how do you fix that? You take your kids out and you homeschool them? Well, how do you homeschool them if you're divorced and you share custody with your ex-wife? Like, how do you convince your ex-wife that that's a good idea to take the kids out of school and homeschool them? And who's going to do it? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be her? Is it going to be 50-50? How do you do it? Do you have time in your schedule, right? Like, that's why I'm saying like we're pretty far down down the decline <laughs> and there's not much you can do to kind of like it's it's like trying to swim up a river like a fast flowing river you're just why right um let me take that banner down yeah invest in cat food invest in uh pet grooming 
uh, pet grooming services, uh, pet clothing. Oh my God. I, um, it was like 15 years ago. I met this chick, um, a few of them at this entrepreneur's award event, um, for fast growing companies. And she had this dog clothing company and they basically imported, you know, stuff made in Taiwan and China to North America that you would put on your dog boots, jackets, scarves, earmuffs, all kinds of shit. And she was growing this company like crazy, right? You know, think about those things because because there, there's ways that you can profit from all this too, right? Consider it. I mean, that was 15 years ago. She's probably killing it right now. She was making bank back then. Uh, looking to crypto, looking, oh, sorry, looking to invest in crypto to hedge against the huge upcoming inflation. What percent do you invest into which ones, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera? Um, I'm going to say this again, guys. There's like Charlie and Miguel do the Cultivate Crypto uh, course through Crypto Mindset every quarter. I always have them on to just catch up and see what's going on in the markets. And, you know, they announce the course it's open. You want to enroll, learn about it. It's like 900 bucks. If you've got a few thousand dollars to play with, it's well worth your while. You'll make the money back very, very quickly. If you got like 50 bucks, don't even bother. But as far as percentage, it really depends on what your risk tolerance is. If, if you're very liberal, if you're very, you know, uh, interested in a big upside and you're cool with the risk, then don't even bother with Bitcoin and go to all the, you know, all the DGEN 11,000 coins that are sitting there in the, you know, the rest of the categories. Like Bitcoin moves, it, it moves well, and you're, and you're going to make way more money holding that than probably any other asset class. But there's like coins in there that you can make, you know, 10, like 100x returns, 500x returns if you get the right ones at the right time and you're paying attention to them. Which ones? It changes consistently it's constantly changing that's why i tell guys to get the cultivate crypto course because the guys teaching the course teach you all of these things that's why they've had such huge multiples and earnings right so again it really it really depends you know you want to play not to lose just buy bitcoin and ethereum or anything in the top five bitcoin ethereum binance uh cardano uh, solana is a big uh up and comer as well you know that's just the way to do it Okay, let's do a few more call-ins. Let's do a few more call-ins and see what we got here. Cancel, minimize, there we go. All right, uh, let's do Rumblefish because I've seen his comments. Uh, he said he has a perspective. All right. Hey, Rich. What's up, buddy? Hey, you there? Hey, how's I'm it going? Here. Good, man. Yeah, look, you know, I'll, I'll be brief. You know, I, just listening to the last show and this show, it's a good conversation for sure. But yeah. here's my perspective. You know, in the existence of humans, right? You know, two million years, tens of thousands of years, however far you want to go back, nature and I think it's twenty six million the last time I checked. <laughs> let's let's do that. Time. Yeah. So nature and history have never been kind for for the weak minded, and you know that from personal yep. perspective. That's it. If you guys out there, what is wrong with your competition on doing themselves? Everyone out there that has all the problems that we're talking about, the causes decline. They're not getting in your way of you succeeding. Um, you know, they're focused on their own insecurity. And, you know, we're built to solve problems. When you run out of problems to solve, you make your own problems. Mm -hmm. That's probably, Rich, how you succeed. You just grind it out and solve problems that create a benefit, a return on investment. Others, the ones we're talking about, are creating problems that get them nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, no reason to get in the way of that. There's no solution to that. As far as the guys about, you know, these mystery philanthropists that uh, want to save the education system ain't gonna happen i mean it's close as we're gonna so, get. so yeah. do you think it's worth saving i don't think it's gonna go down i really don't i just think it's gonna get really really bad and really really stupid and yeah, that's what i'm talking about when i'm referring yeah. to the decline i mean yeah. at some point Here's... you think that the economy and the fiat currency system is yeah. going to collapse on itself and implode but set that aside but all the other stuff yeah. the wokeness you know the high tax rates the lack yeah. of freedom all that stuff, yeah. right? Okay. I think your best bet is to capitalize on it. You 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 nailed it a second ago when you talked about it. Look, grunt, you know, work all these problems back to human nature. It's two things. One, they want to be involved in something and satisfy their insecurity. Two, they want to feel like a victim or be a part of something greater. You can capitalize on that source mm. 
drive of all of this stuff, no matter what's going on, be it whatever we're doing 20 years ago or 20 years from now, uh, capitalize on that. That that's that's as vague as it gets, but I think that people, if people, people are, are, are very are, persuadable. They're very yeah. persuadable. The problem is, is that is that the government's I don't know if they do this intentionally or not, to be honest with you. Like, I really can't tell. I can't tell mm -hmm. if, like, I got involved for about a year and a half dealing with government bureaucrats and politicians mm -hmm. and the critics on a bill that I was lobbying for um, mm -hmm. here in Ontario. Like, I don't know where you live. Where do you live? States. States. Okay. So yeah. basically, the Ontario government's like the equivalent of like a state, like Tennessee or Pennsylvania or something like that. So mm -hmm. I spent all the time with the politicians that govern that particular bill. And I got to be honest mm -hmm. with you, they're not that bright, right? Like I don't. They're persuasive. Their 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 self interest in their jobs and yeah. their and and their personal freedoms that that they get as a benefit working in the government. Mm -hmm. You know, they love that, but they don't strike me as particularly intelligent or swift people. It's more about self interest and control, is what I got mm -hmm. from my experience there. So yeah. I can't really tell if they're doing this intentionally or if it's just like a byproduct of the stupidity of the structure of, of government and the sorts of people that get into it. But I don't see much of that modifying or changing its behavior or direction anytime soon. Right. In fact, it's like 80 percent like people like being ruled. People love rulers. Right. So. Yeah. So it's a very effective thing. I don't know if you ever saw this. Um, they did this test where they had this mock uh, dental office well, it was a real dental you know, dental office, they just shut it down for the day and they put like seven actors in the waiting room. And mm -hmm. this one person, you know, comes in that actually had a scheduled appointment at the dental office that they didn't cancel. They mm -hmm. just canceled like everything else at the time. So they walk in for their scheduled appointment and every 10 seconds there was a loud audible beep. And when the beep went off, every, like all the actors stood up and then they sat down and they went back to reading or watching the TV or playing on their phone. And they did this for about, I think it took about, 10 or 12 of these beep stand up they wait about a second then they sit down and the guy's sitting there and he's looking around like what are these people doing where's what is this beep and why is this happening and it, and it wasn't until about 10 or like a dozen beeps that he started doing the exact same thing he had no idea why but he just started doing it because everybody else in the room was standing up and sitting down with this beep and that's how people operate right yeah you know that's why i'm not yeah, convinced just... that there's a solution to this because the vast majority of the people are are, are doing the beeps they're standing up and they're sitting down they're standing up and sitting down you know when everybody does it yeah yeah no we i think we accidentally created that environment i think it all stems from insecurity guy wanted to stand up because everyone else did if he doesn't he doesn't fit in and all we've done with internet and everything that we're we're sort of focusing on is just created this just massive amount of insecurity every day it's bombarded in everyone's face yeah. as far as fixing of the problem source closest you're going to get is exactly what you did you know, pursue uh, government solutions as best you can as a private citizen. But honestly, you know, what percentage of people need to do that. And who's going to do exactly what you did Very with few. the financial motivation behind it? Very few. So when it gets down to it is you can have faith that people want to preserve comfort. So once we hit that real red line of like disrupting comfort, uh, we'll probably flip back and find another reason why it's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. But for the meantime, the people that are actually on this call, you guys are actually interested um, and doing what's what's best for you, what's best for yourself, focusing on, you know, being driven and a little bit more independent, a little bit less insecure than most. Um, just understand why people do this. Don't get personally uh, upset. If you can't get your voice heard by these guys, they don't want to hear it. They want to hear their right, not your right. And uh, yeah, just focus on taking advantage of it. Every day, more people that adopt that mindset are less and less competing with you for the jobs you want, the pay you want. Just take advantage of it. That's my advice. That's what I'm trying to do myself. Yeah. So lean into it is is basically what I would sum up. Like if you feel pain and discomfort, you know, if there's darkness, mm -hmm. one of the things that they always tell you to do, like, I don't know if you're into like uh, some of the psychedelic stuff out there, like psilocybin and stuff like that. But one of the things that they tell you to do is if you're on a trip, lean into the darkness, right? Like mm -hmm. move, like move towards it. And I think it's good advice in life too, right? Like if there's something mm -hmm. there go and go and take a look at it and see what it is like if you're frustrated with your employer like if you think that you know you're you don't have access to the sorts of freedoms and resources and everything that you thought that you had 10 20 years ago then ask yourself okay well do i just want to keep sucking it up and bending over and grabbing my ankles and just going with the flow or do i want to unplug from this shit and see if there's an opportunity for me to do something else you right. can choose to do either one right it's just okay mm -hmm. 
how like how bad do you want it, man? Like how bad do you want to get out and enjoy the decline so that you've got more control? I'm I'm pretty good. Like there's not much that's going to bother me. Like a lot of people are getting really pissed off with things, and I'm like, can't go to movie theaters. Who cares? I got a wicked home theater. Can't sit in restaurants. I don't give a fuck. I don't like crowds anyway. You know, I'd rather just do takeout or whatever. Um, and they're saying that you can't go to the gym. Well, fuck you. I've got a guy that runs a wicked dojo that's underground. He doesn't give a shit. He's not going to vac- vaccine passport me. Right. Yeah. So, but do most people have that freedom? No, they're a member of LA fitness and they're like, oh shit, I can't go to the gym if I don't get the jab. Right. Or right. I, you know, I won't be able to take girls out on dates, you know, and go to the movies if I don't have the jab. And so many girls on dating apps have jabs and they, you know, guys like to complicate their lives and justify why. And then they wonder mm-hmm. why they systematically every five or 10 years lose more and more access to freedom, decision making, flexibility, and have more money stolen from them going to the government and the programs that they're get that they're getting pissed off with, right? It's this never yeah. ending cycle and you got to put your foot down at some point. Anyway. It's it's yeah. Well you get the point. The time, you yeah. get it. Thanks, Rumble. Thank you. See you, bud. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. All right, let's see what else we got here. Ba-ba-bum. I have some ideas about solution not discussed and of personal experience with religious communities mennonites fit is dark because it's 3 a.m here renee all right renee let's do this hey rich hey man you have a solution can you hear me i can hear you yeah great sorry it's dark here but uh i'm in sweden i'm a canadian but i'm in sweden now okay cool yeah um about solutions i i think they're actually already happening what what is what is going on is all of the institutions in society are failing they've become dysfunctional that's the school police uh the law courts everything the medical establishment is all failing and people are starting to create their own parallel structures so for example the media is failing so people go on youtube and they create their own youtube channel and talk about the things that the media ought to be talking about. Mm-hmm. I hear people in the medical profession saying, uh, because of COVID, we're done with this stuff. We're going to go and we're going to create our own medical association. We're going to go create our own place. You can come there and get help from us. Mm-hmm. And I think that's happening across the board. And I think that's just going to continue to happen. Okay. So these structures are going to rise up organically from people who are dissatisfied with what's happening in their own profession, mm-hmm. they're going to strike out and create their own parallel structures. Okay. So we're going to get to the bottom of this debate on, I think around the 20th of September here in Canada anyway, because we're going to see who the new prime minister is, right? Yeah. yeah and people, people that vote are going to cast a vote based on those beliefs that you just kind of described there. So we'll see what, what percentage of the population subscribes to those ideas, which are, Listen, hey, listen, I love the I love the great ideas, but it still relies on hope. And I said it before, hope's not a great plan, right? So there's got to be there's got to be a move in the direction of that betterment. So I think one of the biggest leading indicators is what people are casting their votes for in the political system. Some people say, you know, I was talking to somebody earlier on today, he said, you know what? Votes don't matter. They don't even, you know, count them. They just make up whatever they want. You know, they're running the government, blah, blah, blah. Okay, maybe. Maybe we're not in a maybe we're not in a democracy. Maybe we don't actually have a voice. Okay. I'm 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 still of the belief that they still count the votes, though, for the most part, unless you know we're dealing with what happened in the US. So we'll see what happens at the end of all this. Okay. You got anything else for me? Well, I'm not quite sure how your response is in answer to what I said. Well, I like the idea, but it's okay. going to rely on. I don't see how it relies on who, who is prime minister. Oh, it doesn't rely on who's prime minister, but it relies on what people cast their votes for. Okay, right? look, here's an example. Here's an example. You know, let me give you an example of what I have in mind. Sure, go ahead. So you, for example, just, just you, you, Rich Cooper, you could say to the people in your neighborhood, after your kids get off of school at 3.30, you can come around to my house and I'll teach you how to repair a car. Mm-hmm. And then you, when your, your parents get home at uh, six or whenever they get home, they can go home. 
So you so, want me to teach other people's kids well, how to repair If you want to do that, I mean, I'm not saying I want you to do that, but that's something that you can do if you so choose. I could, but and why I would I that, want to teach other people's kids how to how to repair a car when I could do parenting with my own child? Well, or my brother's uh, kids, like I got nephews, right? Like, you know, like Okay, you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it, but right. you you want to know what the solutions are. Well, that's not a good solution. And you're already teaching other people's kids because that's what you're doing right now on, on YouTube. Uh, correct. Right. I mean, like this is a way okay, to reach so, a lot I mean, more I'm people you should also do with that, the same amount of time. Someone could but even that has very way. limited effect, right? Like there's still a lot of guys out there that aren't aren't willing to consume this TRP sort of content, right? They don't like okay. it. It violates their belief system or they'll go off into different areas like doom and gloom or they'll be like, too, too positive or too tradcon or whatever right like they're not realists they okay. don't see the objective you said people are people are malleable people are very malleable yeah and so why not they love why a not mold them into your point of view because because my point of view deals with accountability and humans clearly don't like to be accountable it's like free shit free shit means that that you don't have to be accountable and you lose your freedoms well i think people are interested in in their own self-interest I think if you show them that your way is better for them, they'll go for that. So you, you want me to run for politics, basically, is what no, you're saying? No, that's the last thing you should do. I think that's totally useless. <laughs> yeah, good. We agree no, on that. No, then. you should not do that, but you can take local action. So so, so my question to you is, are you a let's save the West guy or are you a let's enjoy the decline guy? Well, uh if the West goes, what do you have left? You have yourself, you, man. Gonna, You've got your you network. You've got Islamic your tribe. Country? Pardon me? Are you going to live in an Islamic country? In a Slavic country? In an Islamic country. Doesn't matter to me. Oh, you're happy to live under under Sharia law? I have a lot of Arabic friends. They seem like they live pretty good lives. Okay. Uh, I don't want to live in Sharia law. Okay, so you don't I, have I like to, man. You can move wherever you want. Okay. <laughs> You've got the ability to maneuver, right? You have legs, yeah. you know, you can use them. I'm assuming that you've got a store of value, like I talked earlier at the very beginning. Did you watch that part? Yeah. So yeah. So you've got a store of value, so that means that you have the means to barter, so that means that you can travel somewhere else. You can go wherever you want. That's correct. Right? But, okay. So you didn't answer my question. So are you, so are you a enjoy the decline guy, or are you a save the West guy? I, I guess I'm a save the West guy. Okay. Okay. Got it. I'm going to commit to that. <laughs> well, you're very welcome to, uh, you know, start up a plan and I, I hope that you're successful at it, bro. Okay. Great. All right, man. See ya. Yeah, actually, you know what? I don't care by Jack Donovan. Thanks for the reminder, Moth. Let's go get that one. This is probably... One of my favorite blogs. I haven't visited in a while, so let's throw this up on the screen. It's a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer, but I think that it is worth spending some time on with this cast. Share screen, window, boom, boom. All right, so if you don't know who Jack is, he's a good dude. Uh, he's kind of like a leave me alone sort of guy. Um, I don't care, okay? so. You can find this if you search at any time. I'm just going to read it out. So just, you know, so just roll with me on this, all right? This essay was originally published in 2014, but it's no longer available. A reader recently requested the link. I thought I'd reshare it. Oh, it looks like he took it down. Anyway, these three magic words could end so many arguments. Most appeals in the name of social justice rely on an underlying assumption of universal altruism. They assume that if that, sorry, they assume that you care if something bad happens to anyone, anywhere, and advise you to take some sort of action to ease or prevent their suffering. People react by questioning whether or not that stranger, someone is really suffering, or if they are suffering any more than, anywhere, than anyone else. They examine the circumstances of the alleged suffering and the motives of the people bringing the alleged suffering to light. Good point so far. They argue, sorry, <clears throat> sorry about that. I've got to drink some more of my tea here. They argue about the details and the proportion of the suffering and point. Remember how we were talking about victimhood earlier? Boom. They argue about the details and the proportion of the suffering 
and point out their own allegedly comparable suffering or the suffering of some person or people who are allegedly suffering more. Once you're arguing, they've already got you. Once you're arguing, you've agreed that you could care or would care, that you should theoretically care given satisfactory evidence and argumentation. But what would they say if you stopped pretending to care at all? There would be no point in arguing about the details. Of course, as normal humans, we can always imagine ourselves in another human's position. We can't empathize with others. That's what makes movies and novels work. But we really, sorry, but we can't really care about the suffering of every man and woman on the planet. The idea that we should is insane and inhuman. So much of what people say they care about is just emotional pornography and can springboard them into an acrobatic display of moral and political posturing. I see all this propaganda online telling me what's not okay and how I'm supposed to feel about strangers and other groups of people. If they get me to agree that I care about these strangers and their unhappiness, I'm supposed to accept responsibility for that unhappiness and do whatever I can to alleviate it. This is all manipulation, a political plucking of one bit of human suffering out of an unimaginable expanse of human suffering all to serve this agenda or that one. Some kid in Africa probably got his head sawed off with a butter knife while some chick named Shoshina experienced a nightmare of catcalling in New York City. No one cared because they weren't told to care. Given their perceivable social class and sex, the guys who were expressing their admiration for Shoshina have probably experienced far more brutality than being propositioned for sex. And no one cared when it happened. Shoshina is just a squeaky wheel who wants to be lubricated with your tears. If we really cared about everyone, we would never even register feelings or microaggressions or first world problems because our brains would be blown out from watching third world ultra violence. We'd be watching and liking and sharing nonstop videos of prison rapes and basement executions and reading stories about sex slavery and child prostitution. We'd be outraged at the injustice of it all, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Those things are happening right now, and they more or less have been happening at varying levels for all of human history. If violence is actually decreasing worldwide, as Steven Pinker suggests, then it is probably in part because due to the high incarceration rents, high incarceration rates and widespread fear of sanctioned violence threatened by increasingly omnipotent surveillance in police states in the first world. And omnipotent surveillance states are not okay. The reason that people care about the same thing at the same time, whatever today's outrage or viral video is, is that we all have to pick and choose. We decide, if not consciously, then by our choices, that one person, one person's suffering is more important than another. Who we or maybe you, because I'm not talking about me here, decide to care about is completely arbitrary. Whatever human tragedy passes our eyes or ears, I don't care what happened to everyone everywhere. I don't care what happens to strangers. It's an admission that sounds barbaric and unspeakably taboo. It's taboo because people have, have never been conned into believing that they're supposed to do something they can never do. Care equally about everyone all around the world. He goes on to say, I care about what happens to my friends, my family, and my tribe. I care even at this point, I am using to care very loosely about the kind of people I generally like, respect, or support. People who are like me or who are like the people I like. When someone registers an opinion or tells me I'm supposed to care about something, if I'm even thinking about caring, I look them up, I ask myself, I would be interested, sorry, and I ask myself if I would be interested in what this person had to say if they were sitting in the same room as me. You guys have heard me talk about, <clears throat> ask yourself if you would exchange lives with somebody dispensing advice to you. Similar sort of concept, right? Sometimes I would, usually I would not. I probably wouldn't even have a drink with them or give them a single moment of my time. If they're telling me that something bad happened to them, I have to admit that in most cases, I probably don't care. Why should I care about the suffering of the stranger instead of that one? If they're telling me that I should change, I ask why? If I'm the, sorry, if the only answer is to theory, theoretically prevent the alleged and future suffering of some other group of people I don't know or care about, then my answer is, why bother? I'll change to some extent to gain honor in the eyes of men I respect, personally or in the abstract, but why would I change to prevent the unhappiness of some stranger? This idea that we are all each other's shepherds and that we are all responsible for the happiness of all humankind is paralyzing nonsense. At best, it keeps men busy arguing about the things over which they have almost no control about. 
At worst, it makes men vulnerable to all sorts of manipulation by people who have already decided that they are disposable rubes. Now, this is exactly what the state does right now with this beer bug and everything that's built around this ecosystem that the pharma companies are all pushing. At worst, it makes men vulnerable to all sorts of manipulation. How many guys have been manipulated by all of this nonsense that we've heard in the last couple of years? Think about that. Anyway, I'll go on. Like naive, right? Like naive retirees giving away their savings to charity grifters or high living evangelists. Men end up giving away everything worth having to people who are ideologically incapable of even acknowledging their sacrifice. I'm not encouraging people to stop caring about anyone. I'm encouraging them to stop caring about everyone. If you say you love someone, you don't really love anyone. Love is a choice, a discriminatory act. You don't pick your team if you aren't willing to draw the line between who you care about and who you don't. Between us and them, then you'll be like all of these other suckers who care about whoever and whatever they click on every morning. We live in an us and them environment, folks. It's been that way throughout the entire human recorded history. It's always us versus them. It's always going to be that way. That's never going to change. No amount of globalism, liberalism, or any other ism is ever going to change the fact that humans are actually pretty freaking tribal. Care passionately, but discriminate but discriminately. And if you don't really care, then say it. I don't care. It's simple, but powerful. It's liberating, but also dangerous and heretical. The idea that we are all in this together and are working in good faith to solve the world's problems is an illusion that traps us in a crisscrossed, impenetrable web of synthetic yarn. If you pull that fuzzy pink string, that completely unwarranted assumption of universal goodwill, several, sorry, Civil society collapses in a Hobbesian war of all against all, where no one trusts anyone. When free from our attachments to everyone, everywhere, we find ourselves adrift in a staggering, confused mass of drooling, covious humanity. <clears throat> we can make sense of it all from and find our beginnings, and only when a form of discriminatory alliances and new tribes built on trust, common interests, and mutual admiration, instead of being bound to the great lie of love for all neighbors. Also the author of the book, The Way of Men. I highly recommend you guys check out his stuff. I don't care. That's just, you know, whatever it's like, oh, you know, you can solve it by doing this, that, or the other thing, or, you know, between four and six, Rich, if you taught kids how to work on cars, you know, you could, you, you too could save the world. That's kind of my feeling. I, I don't care, right? Like, I have people in my inner circle that I would rather dispense my time, resources, and energy on. Not, you know, some kid four doors down that doesn't have anybody home between 4 and 6 p.m. because their parents made some bad life cho choices. I don't care. Mental point of origin. It's a powerful thing once you understand it, right? Uh, Bert says he has some thoughts about a solution. Let's see what else we got here. I got a whole bunch. I'm going to pull Bird in because he's one of my community members. So there you go, buddy. What do you got for me? Hey, what's going on, Rich? What's up, brother? So I uh, just got the kids down. Um, a little less about solution, but it touches on it. And maybe you covered this in uh, in the last video, but um, I just can't get the quote out of my mind and I'm going to butcher it. But, you know, when they came for the plumbers, I didn't say anything because I wasn't a plumber. You know, when they came for the bakers, I didn't say anything because I wasn't a baker, you know. And then eventually it gets to you or whatever it is, you know, when they came for me, there was no one left. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, should we do something? I just can't get that out of my mind. If we don't do something at some point, you know, we're the last one standing and, and the last ones uh, that they're going to be coming for. And so I feel like there's got to be some it's more pragmatic than if we have you know, this big obligation to do something for others, you know, to me, it comes down to uh, self-preservation and, uh, and then obviously yeah, I know, but it's like, kids and it's like the frog in the pot, right? Like it doesn't know that it's being boiled because it gets cooked so slowly. Most of society is so resilient to all of this nonsense. It's like, you know, like one thing at a time, like they, they never claw back the tax rates. They always tax you more, right? It's like, they just slowly kind of do it over time. And it's like, you know, they came up with taxation. Why? Because they ran into a bunch of debt decades ago and they're like, well, 
we need to pay this shit off. So we're just going to tax you for a little bit, but we promise it's only temporary. And it's oh, like, yeah, I mean, that, that's how, that's how just they do it. Us, like, right. Uh, getting a little feedback. Yeah. That's totally the, the tools of tyranny, right. Is to chip right. away. But th- there's also this element of, um, particularly in Western in, in the Western uh, in the Western world and particularly in America, Canada, I mean, we're just so fat and numb, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we're, we're numbed by TV. We're numbed by porn. We're numbed by booze. We're numbed by gossip. So that, you know, so that, we're, we're so that all goes back to the, everything. I don't care blog that I just read though. Right. It's like, why do we want to care about all this stuff? when We don't have any control out of it. And it's, and we've always been an us versus them society. Right. No, yeah, absolutely. But I think that's why we see this decline. Because we're so numb, we're fine with a little concession here, a little concession there. It's it's that's back up. to your your frog in the in the pot, right? That's what's happening around us. And some of us are clued in a little bit more of the writing on the wall, as you said earlier, right? We we see what's happening. And then the question comes, do we do anything about it? Is is there a solution? Um, do we feel like there's a meaningful impact we can have? And if so, sh- is it worth our time and effort? And, and the other thing I think is interesting, most of the people that are having this debate or having the debate because we're focused on kicking ass for ourselves to begin with, right? We're not crying about things. We're not complaining. There's a wall in front of us. We're just climbing over it or going around it or going under it. Right. And, and that generally is red pill, to a degree, conservative philosophy, just get shit done, right? Versus crying and whining and complaining. And and yeah. uh, and that's why you see less of us in public office because we got stuff to do. We got families to take care of. We got our cell, our businesses. Mm-hmm. So, but it just comes back to that quote. I feel like we've got to do something that's pragmatic if, if, if for no other reason than... So uh, why can't you limit the something to your inner circle? Like why can't you draw a perimeter around us? Well, and that's then, certainly where you have to start. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, start, start there. You know, take care of yourself, take care of your own. You know, draw that, draw that perimeter. And look, if you want to widen that perimeter and add five, ten more people to it, have have some more impact. You know, some more reach. Cool, do it. Because I mean, you've taken care of number one first, right? Oh, that's hundred percent. I mean, you got to put your oxygen mask on first. I mean, that, right, that, yeah. that that's in the micro, right? In your freaking relationships, you got to take care of yourself first. It's the same thing in society. And everything on the micro also works on the macro, despite what these politicians are telling us. Yeah. And you know that they're. But I mean, like that's where you run in the roadblocks, though, where they really start to push back, like you know, like, you know, the stuff that I talk about. So, I mean, like you're a member of the community, you know, we have some dialogue back and forth privately, obviously, you know, from time to time, but a lot of the stuff that you get, you know, that the other guys get, and we have like field reports on, and we kind of like swap some notes on that sort of stuff. That's, that's very unique. Like that's a very small percentage of the population. Most of the people, when they hear me talk about certain ideas, like if I say something like, you know, men or women are different for these five reasons, a lot of women will lose their shit and a lot of white knights will lose their shit, right? It's like, you know, how can you say these things? Like, you know, how can you possibly say these things? Like, this is not, you know, this, this sheds light that I don't like. Right. And it's like, I feel offended now. And it turns into all these other components and sort of stuff like that. That's why I'm just saying, you know, we're still in an us versus them sort of space. And if you can draw that perimeter, take care of your number ones, you know, build, build something up that you can enjoy, you know, that, that vessel, that arc, whatever the hell it is that you want to call it, and then invite people onto your arc that vessel and then just kind of sail, <laughs> sail into the sunset and just enjoy the decline together sort of thing. And if you want to pick up some people along the way, do that. But I don't think that it's a good use of time, effort and resources to like mill over that set of sound bites there that you pull out at the beginning. So I'm listening to a podcast right now with my kids. It's called, um, growing Patriots. If there's any mm-hmm. parents on there. I'd recommend it. But, uh, it's a podcast that goes through early American history. And one of the things I learned that I wasn't quite aware of and didn't grasp completely is that um, only about 30% of the population during the revolutionary uh, time period, revolutionary war actually supported independence. The other 30 or 40% were, were loyalists to Britain and the rest were like, just keep me out of it. Keep my head down. Kind of like what you're saying. I'm on my boat. You know, I just don't want to get caught in the middle. I'm doing my thing. Yeah. Um, but that reflected on me pretty heavily that only 30 percent 
really, you know, got on board and made this thing happen that had such a positive impact on the development of Western culture. Um, you know, the fact that most people are going to get pissed off by your statement that men and women are different, mm-hmm. you know, doesn't mean it, you know, we, we should stop saying it or that we should just be in that other 25, 30% that's, that's focusing on see, yourself. You know, see, like, this like is a good one. resource, right? Like, like this is a good resource. Now the question then becomes like, how do you get all kids to drink this Kool-Aid? Because oh, right well, now, like I can tell by the number of episodes and the ratings that the reach is very, it's, it's basically abysmal. It's like non-existent. There's not yeah, a lot of people that pay attention yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know what the content looks like, so I'm not endorsing it or rejecting it. I'm just saying that the notions that you're discussing, you're a smart guy and I trust you and I like you. So I'm assuming it's good. But how would you get like, because they get the indoctrination through the school system, right? It's critical well, race theory and wokeness and da-da-da, political correctness and you can't you can't say words in school anymore like you can't say retard in school anymore that was like you know when we were kids in school yeah that'd be like ah shut up you retard and you just kind of go and you you know go about your day now it's like people lose their shit if you say that well i think there's two things happening there one you know i i think you and i would agree that there were some things that needed to be addressed but the problem is the pendulum swings too far right and then mm-hmm. people take it too far and so, and, and that's generally how anything happens is they take a, something a little and they blow it out of proportion or it gets, it becomes a monster uh, of unintended consequences. But the second is the gentleman that you had on to talking about education, that's an intentional by design Marxist leftist strategy. I mean, they've been talking about integrating and infecting and, and, and targeting the education system mm-hmm. for probably about three decades now. It's, that is part of their strategy. Oh yeah. And so it's a you know strategy for strategy to counter. I, I think the rise of of, uh, of of truth based education or whatever you want to call. Do you have it. your kids in the public school system or a private school system? Pri- private school. Private yeah. and on, like on on, Navy, on the naval base, they say the pledge of allegiance. There's still a a, Christ- a Christmas pageant. Okay. Um, so, and that was an important move uh, that my ex-wife and I uh, agreed on and, and made. But you know, even that is not you know perfect. But you know, it's an eighty twenty approach, and and it's yeah. much better than the public. But um, there's a great book about public education called Get Out Now, mm-hmm. uh, and and it talks about just how bad the public school system really is. And it's you know it's all because a small amount of people exert a huge amount of pressure on one administrator on one school district you know they get these activists across the country coming down you know like a hammer on one district to get what they want right and then they Mm -hmm. use that as an example and they go to the next and they go to the next they're not going to stop right so if we you know enjoy the climb well there's a couple things there one how long is the decline going to last before it re- shit really hits the fan? And we're not talking about enjoying the decline. We're talking about surviving the decline, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a different conversation. And so yeah, surviving is going to come from a, from a collapse, right? Like we're not talking about surviving. We're, we're, we're just assuming that they're going to keep, keep on kicking the can down the road in our lifetime. Well, and then, and then you got your kids, you know, you looked out at them and you're like, what are they going to inherit? Yeah, so I, think, hey, I, listen, think, I think we got to at least dude, I get it. I get it. Effort, you know, I get so it, but I'm I mean, in, like, I'm here to save the West, but pragmatically camp, you know, like, like I get it. And to, you know, to one degree, like, it's like, you know, I'm kind of glad I got a daughter. Cause it's like, like women, like if you understand the they way the world works, way. they win either way. Yeah. 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 Except, yeah. For, except that they're part of that 60% unhappy blue pill women. Group. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's, I mean, there's all kinds of problems that kind of like pile onto this, right. It's, 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 it's just, you know, we could have this conversation for hours, but it's just like, hey, you know what, man? I think that we agree that things are on the decline. So, like, like, do we agree that you can enjoy it as it's as it's going oh, about its 100%. business? I mean, you yeah. have to find joy and, and, and gratitude in. What about in- money, though? Because I mean, like, money obviously matters, right? Because I mean, you have the ability to put your kids in private school, right? So, like, do you need money to enjoy the decline? Like, would you say that, or do you disagree with that? I think it depends on your individual circumstance. I, you know, I just was mentioning the other day to a buddy of mine, if I didn't have my kids, I'd be in a customized van that I built myself driving through Sedona right now. Right. I mean, and, I, and I'd be able to do it pretty cost effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, you do need money. But, you know, there's some there was an interesting video from uh, someone, uh, what Jennifer Molesky or whatever. Do you uh, follow her at all? 
Uh, she's like the dating advice chick. Uh, kind of. She's you know anti blame, anti victimhood. I think she was okay. at one of the conferences uh, a while back. She didn't do so well at the conference, but I like her channel. She had a good video recently that just talked about you know money being a tool and the way that it flows, and she she framed it well. You can make you can make money in this environment. I mean, there's so many. Oh, you know, yeah. So many different rabbit holes that you can go down. You got to be intentional about it. Yeah. Um, but money, money isn't really an issue if you're putting in in the time and effort. Um, if you've got an IQ over 110, and then, and maybe even less than that, right? I mean, yep. persistence is 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 all that it really takes at the end of the day. But I agree. Yeah, you need a certain amount of money, of course. You know, yeah. based off of what you want your comfort level and what you want your lifestyle. Would you say that it's mandatory though if you want to enjoy the decline? I mean, you couldn't enjoy it. Like, so here's. So here's the problem that most people have is that is that they don't have freedom to maneuver. They don't have access to financial resources and stored value. They're reliant on it. Like they say that if you uh, like, a set, I think it was uh, Kevin O'Leary that said this, but he said something along the lines of they they give you a salary to kill your dreams or or right. a salary is a drug that they give you to like kill your dreams, you know, basically. And there's also the people that are also on government assistance that rely on on state handouts. So that means they have to keep voting for state handouts, which is going right. which, which is big government, you know, yeah. socialism programs and more programs. Universal you know, sort of income, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the more people they can have kind of plugged into the employment system where like right now we're seeing the government mandate employers to have their employees vaccinated, right? So it's like the government says you have to do this, then then the companies say, okay, well, if we don't do this and we're going to incur fines, whatever, yep. taxes or something like that. So we're going to make our employees do this. So it's like, you know, this trickle down effect. So they so they still have control that way. So whether you're on the government teat sitting at home or you're on the government teat working for somebody, you're on the government teat, right? Well, I think it's, you know, it's back to the phrase you've used in the past. Are you, uh, are you bringing, do you want to bring in fuck you money? Do you want to not just enjoy it but do you want to be able to be vocal do you know unbound say anything go anywhere you know with with uh you know so a certain level of impunity or, or lack of risk that they can cancel you versus do you just want to enjoy it right yeah. do you want to be quiet in the shadows doing your thing right and enjoying your day-to-day but those are kind of different areas right mm -hmm. um and i i want to get to um being able to live my truth vocally so my kids can see the type of man uh, I want. Have to you, be. have you, have you gotten up on a platform and started broadcasting that anywhere? In terms of my thoughts and beliefs and, and, and where I stand on issues. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, like you've got this hope that, you know, things can be saved. Like, you know, like how do we remedy this so that my kids don't live in a fucked up world basically. You know, I, I've got a mixed bag and, 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 and you know, Fr frankly, I'm also part of the problem because some parts of my business propagate some of this false narrative because of just kind of the business model that I'm in. Uh, and I'm not particularly proud of that. Um, but I certainly, you know, I feel like I'm trying to do my part in small ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even if it's just something like the Vax, you know, I don't have 100 employees, but I certainly have a, a good number and, um, you know, they know that it's, it's up to them. It's their own personal choice. And I've been very clear about that. Mm -hmm. So there's small ways that I'm trying to do it, but That's you good. know, I kind of came around to some of this thinking and, and some of my, my positions just in the last year and a half through, through my divorce and kind of thinking, and also just how rapidly culture has changed in the last five years. Right. And I'm like, well, <laughs> hold, hold up. But, um, yeah, I, I have a relatively, uh, Mm, tenuous position. Um, I, I could not be as vocal about everything as I would like to be, yeah. uh, at least right now. And and my intent is is to change that. Uh, and then when I get to that, it's space, very difficult to change it though, because I mean, like you can't be vocal for your own reasons tied into what you're doing. And even if you didn't have those liabilities, like if you didn't have those anchors, and you went on a platform, let's say like YouTube, and you wanted to like broadcast yourself freely, you can't because they censor you. Right. Well, so, yeah. So it's like, yeah. how do you, how do you communicate that? Right. You know, yeah, I, that's I mean, why, I mean, that's why I just keep going back to, you know what, the best use of my time, build that perimeter, form your tribe, take care of it. 
That's it. You know, if you you know I, would ch- I would challenge that thought a little bit, Rich. I mean, you, I think you, yeah, some of what you say is hidden behind your membership wall, but a lot of it's, it's out there and mm-hmm. it may not be able to be monetized, you know, through the channel. And no, but I mean, like you notice that the conversations we have on Zoom versus what we're having publicly. Sure. These are a lot more watered down. Like we don't get into specifics. Oh, of course, you things, know, yeah. you know, but, but that's all, that's kind of everything, right? You gotta, yeah. you gotta crawl, walk, run. And if you came in, came in hot right at the start, you know, it would, people need to be, they need to be led. Right. And yeah. and it's a process And the same way they're incrementally taking them down this ridiculous cultural road. We got to incrementally show them the light and be beacons. And, and you're right. It starts with taking care of yourself, taking care yeah. of your surroundings, being someone that someone's like, Hey, how did you do that? Like, what's your, you know, just like that guy on the, um, in the group the other day that was talking about his brother-in-law, like you invite him out for a beer, you mention mm-hmm. a couple things and see if see he, bites. Do. And if he doesn't, you know, you, you, you don't diary of the mouth and throw up on him. Cause he's just not ready for it. You know? Yeah. I can say this. I mean, like one of the things that I am mindful of is like, you know, I talk about concepts and ideas and it's like, I, I need to embody them and, and I won't talk about things that are a violation of the beliefs that I rule in my own life. Right. So when I tell you guys to fucking learn how to fight, I'm at the dojo several times a week learning how to fight. Right. Like, like when I say self-care matters, like I'm not fat, like, you know, I'm on my bike, I'm doing my cardio conditioning. Like I take care of myself. Right. So I, you know, I can lead by example in that way. And I think that's a great thing that, you know, that we can do as men is, you know, set those examples for, our own kids and, and people that look at us, you know, even if they, even if they want to flick boogers at me, right. Cause I get a lot of that. There's a lot of nerds out there that think that they know better, you know, hiding behind their computer screen in a fake avatar. There's a lot of this stuff that like goes on where, where, where people try to challenge you. Right. And it's like, dude, you know, get in the ring, man, get in the ring. Oh, to- I, oh, well, totally. I mean, that that's all noise. That's distraction. That's not yeah. even worth it. If they're, you know, uh, what's the other quote? Um, criticism rarely comes from uh above it always comes from below right yeah. people that see you pushing you know they respect the the the, the battle and and the right. effort people below you that aren't doing anything are the ones that want to throw the knives yeah. and um but you said something earlier too what was it about um you know our anchors and our hang-ups and 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 whether or not we can live that truth I think that's part that's got to be some part of the solution is that we've got to introduce these thoughts earlier on before people make these decisions to get to go take a job paying them 150 where they can't say peep right without fear that they're going to lose or without going along or they get involved in the wrong relationship with someone with totally different philosophy and they feel like they can't say peep and then they've got kids and then they're tied with that and yeah. you know we've got to you know uh, there's another member of the group that's uh, 10 years older and, and he likes to bring up, um, Hey man, you, you know, you got 10 more years with this truth than I did. And then we busted moths, uh, balls. Cause he's got, he's 10 years younger than I am. So I'm like, well, freaking Chris has got 20 years, you know, mm-hmm. uh, jump on, on, on you and 10 on me. So figuring out how to teach these lessons earlier. And I've recently picked up Rolo's book, um, book number two that has the chapters about, uh, parenting. Mm-hmm. So reading through that and, you know, I think it does start with the, our kids, right. And making sure that they've got the right mindset to go out into this world. And if enough people have that, then, you know, then the seats see changes because ultimately these people that we're going against, you know, they're not producers, they're not producing no, things, no, right. They're takers. They're yeah. takers. So at some point, right. That the balance starts to shift again. And, um, and you also mentioned something about politicians earlier. I saw another video that I thought was interesting that uh, power and politicians or, or power is inherently anti-intellectual, right? Because uh, critical thought and, and well, deep explains why a lot of politicians are so dumb. Well, and, and, and because those things, uh, you know, uh, thoughts and reflection, uh, pondering, uh, it challenges power. Right. Mm-hmm. So power almost uh, in, uh, by default has to be anti-intellectual. Right. It's got to it's got to dumb itself down to attempt uh, to, to do what it needs to do, which is to get people in line. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't want to have those critical conversations. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, th- th- I mean, there's a there's there's a lot there, but I, at least five percent uh, of our efforts got to be you know, to, to the greater good, because otherwise uh, we got to at least stem the tide 
So we've got uh, some faith on our deathbed that our kids have a, a fighting I'm, chance. I'm doing what I can here, you know, with the <laughs> YouTubes of the world to try to impart, you know, what I see. And, you know, there's some stuff people agree with. There's some stuff that people don't agree with, right? Sure, of course. Um, I don't agree. I mean, yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we can always agree to disagree. That's how. That's how proper situations work. Right? <laughs> That's right. That's how it used to work. That's how it used, That's to, how it work, used to work, man. It used yeah. to be like, hey, I got vaccinated. Cool. Did you get vaccinated? No, I didn't think it was worth my while. Okay, cool. All right, cool. And then you just kind of walk away. That's how we normally work, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we've uh, we've lost a lot of what normal. But hey, man, it's been a great chat. I appreciate yeah, thanks, it. Man. Yep. All right, see you, bro. That guy's awesome. Um, What are we at here? We're at a buck 44 we're going a little bit over let's see if we can do one more here uh save the west what do we got desire i think fax pass what do you guys if you would have would love to talk all right where's zaza zaza where'd you go zaza's not there he bounced okay um Alex, no, you're not there. Guys, uh, Mike, okay, let's see. The sign is, okay, let's see what Mike's got here. He's got the climb, maybe a blessing in disguise. This is time when one has to be strong enough to be on an island. Okay, let's see what you got. What do you got from me here, Mike? Hello? Oh, hi, Rich. Uh, I, uh, there yeah, we hi. go. Okay. Uh, my internet might be a little bit patchy, but uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I should come through clear enough. Uh, okay, where are you located? But uh, by the time those IDs, I'm in Miami at the moment. Okay. It's just that I have this, you know, shit hotel internet. So yeah, it's something I have okay. to work with. All right. So what do you got for me with this blessing in disguise? Uh, well, the general sort of concept, I think you've gone over it in one way or another, the previous two guys anyway. But uh, the general sentiment being is that this sort of decline gives you, um, creates sort of a Darwinistic environment in which you either sync with the sort of, with what goes on in the environment. You have the internal resources to hold frame, to borrow the common vernacular of the, of the space, uh, and uh, <clears throat> build yourself up to sort of withstand the external pressures. Okay, yeah, that's what we talked about at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just did. I, I posted that in chat a little bit uh, sort of before it was discussed in the Collins, and I'm not sure, maybe it was um, covered in the earlier part of the show as well. Okay, so at the end of the day, if if you're in a position to enjoy the actual decline, then you then it will be like for that individual a blessing in disguise for them because they're going to level up. So it's So it's that pursuit of excellence thing is what you're saying really, right? It's a pursuit of excellence, and the blessing is this, in disguise is actually more of a um, a common good in the sense that a more uh, a more challenging environment produces a generation uh, later on that's sort of comprised to a larger extent of people who have withstood that specific pressure. Yeah, if it's so, a, yeah, if it's a tougher if it's a tougher environment, that obviously you know creates tougher people, but it's going to be tough for those doing the work to enjoy the decline, it's not going to be particularly tough for those already contributing to the decline that are voting for policies, less freedom, more free shit, higher taxes, right? Like it, it doesn't really change their life either way. I think that this notion, and I mentioned it in the other video, but, but this notion of this idea that I think it was B Rob that came up with this, the guy that wrote salty, I don't have the, this book here, but, um, he came up with this notion that like, you know, 50, 100 years in the future, there's going to be two different classes of people. There's going to be those all on the government teat, not doing anything, getting into free shit, and like an elite class of those that have done the work. They'll be living up in the clouds or something, you know, crazy like that. But um, yeah, it's 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 interesting because you're not wrong. The, the, the decline will be a blessing for those doing the work. For those well, I mean, that are that are not doing the work, that are taking the handouts, they'll be like the frog in the pot, you know, going through the slow boil, and, and they don't even know that it's happening to them because they're oblivious. Yeah, that. So, to a previous point that you've made, that you know, the the sort of the bottom dwellers are enjoying the decline. I don't think. Um, so, first of all, we all enjoy different things, and I don't necessarily think that uh, doing the work, if you're doing it correctly, is an unenjoyable thing. If you're on your purpose, if you're sort of if you feel efficacious and if you're pursuing and achieving success, I think that's pleasurable in and of itself. 
uh, even from a biological standpoint, because, for example, testosterone, the, the purpose of testosterone among you know, sort of bi building up androgenicity, uh, androgenicity in the human body is also to make effort feel good. So we're sort of wired. Cast, right? Uh, I did watch the Huberman cast. I'm I'm subscribed to him and a few other uh, people with uh, oh, yeah. significantly better educations than my own. <clears throat> yeah. So to that extent, I think uh, I think I think there's still enjoyment in doing the work, even if it's in a uh, in a hostile environment. And mm -hmm. at the same time, I think the enjoyment of the of the people who are sort of you know the the sheepish crowd who who just go with the flow. I think it's very relative. Uh, it's an enjoyment in the sense that uh, they have access to being sedated um, to an extent where they don't really e experience the displeasures that they bring upon themselves, such as being taxed out the ass, for example. Mm. Okay. All right. I I'm going to grab Santiago here. Thanks, Mike. I'm going to let you go. Thanks, brother. Yep. Um, Santiago, you want to push back on the decline narrative. So... Do you have audio and in, in, in a camera? Because I see your post, but I don't. I don't see that you've got audio and a camera working. Uh, to do, uh, I see what else we got. Oh, there we go. All right, Santiago, you ready to go? Let's do this. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. What do you got for me here? Okay, so I wanted to push back on the decline narrative. Okay. Um, I'm not going to show my face because I'm a public school teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, uh, okay. but um, basically. In the classroom, I see, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that students, they kind of see the BS, they see the bullshit and okay. it's spe specifically the boys. I think, I think there's hope in the boys. Um, and I recognize it when, what at, the my, that you teach? I teach high school. So okay. I'm mainly dealing with like 14 to 18 year olds. Okay. So and, let, let me ask you this question. Why do you think that they see through the bullshit? Like, how do they see through the bullshit? Where do they get that from? Like, are they following Chet Hanks or something? Or like, where's it come from? Um, I think, I think the internet just allows people to stumble upon other ideas. And once they see ideas that align with reality, much closer mm -hmm. to reality, they start waking up from it. And one of the things that I noticed was like, I don't, I don't ever give my political opinions. And just that simple act of not giving my opinion, it's like they click in on that. It's like, hey, he's not saying the same thing all the other teachers are saying. He's not even saying anything. And so what will happen is later on, like uh, at lunch or something, they'll come and ask me like, hey, like how come, you know, you're not all about like diversity or, or uh, inclusion or whatever. Like they'll, uh, they'll come talk to me about it because they're curious because I never say anything because I don't say anything I don't believe in. And they'll, they'll try to make that connection. And, and of course, when they come and speak to me one on one, I'll tell them like, yeah, I think it's a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. And and I'm starting to recognize like, hey, they see this too. The younger generation sees it. And I don't know, maybe maybe they're going to get beaten down and and submit to it. Or maybe there's hope there. I just so, want to um, like what what percentage of the teachers in your school are female versus male? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think. I would say it's about, I would say it's about thirty percent male, seventy percent female. Okay, and Not what, there. and what percentage of the teachers in your school um, support liberalism, social justice, wokeness, political correctness? Um, it's it's weird because it just feels like it just kind. Of, I'm in California, by the way, so it just okay. it kind of feels like the standard. But mm -hmm. there's definitely some teachers just doing it just because you know, it's like I said, it's the standard. They're just kind of forced to do it. And I don't know whether or not they truly believe it. Um, but are they I've forced to do it as part of the curriculum or are they forced to do it because it's like social pressure from their peers? Like, oh, we have to talk about rainbows today because, you know, like we've got them all over the school because it's rainbow month. Um, it's, it's usually, it's usually big social events or like staff meetings and like, Hey, let's retrain on how to do this or how to handle, you know, these emotionally sensitive situations, stuff like right, that. Right. It's, it's, it's not, it hasn't embedded itself directly in the curriculum yet. Like mm -hmm. what I love is I still teach what I want to teach. Like nobody's coming in and checking on me. Like, Hey, are you doing it? This critical uh, theory, uh, you know, no and, one's really doing that. And the, uh, and the kids in your school, like, are you in an upper class neighborhood, lower class, middle class? Like what sort of um, it's, it's middle to lower class in the, in the school that I teach. Yeah. Okay. okay. Middle to lower class. And, but, oh, and, is it, and is it all the boys? Like, do, do all the boys kind of like get it? Like they kind of see through the bullshit, like they see the code in the matrix or is it just like the more alpha male ones? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I, 
I, it, it's it's usually the alpha male ones that that immediately pick up on it right away and i could see them i could see them putting putting pressure on it one thing that i noticed though for sure is that is that there's it's it's weird it's almost completely gendered i've realized it's completely gendered now so you'll have the girls in class ready to like you know go full uh what's the word go full karen like screeching karen right yeah. but the the guys are quietly just like rolling their eyes and just like this is stupid mm -hmm. and like it's it's almost it almost feels like it's completely gendered at this point but but um yeah, that's interesting like, it, it's yeah. it's it's always going to be like the stronger more alpha sort of boys that will that will unplug from the crap first and yeah you're going to have these like beta guys that are like you know the white knights that'll swoop in for the you know for like the uh, protection of milady sort of thing Mm -hmm. um and they'll support the same narratives that they do so i think that you're still going to have like an 80 20 split like 20 percent will be unplugged or or be unplugging and then the other 80 percent will support the decline narrative and contribute to it so don't you think don't you think though with like the rise of people like yourself or jordan peterson or rollo or just just other other ideas around don't you think there's a chance for the ship to turn um we don't put enough of a dent in the universe to turn to, to turn that shit or shit. <laughs> shit shit or ship you know whatever you want to call it yeah, yeah 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 i don't think that we put enough of a dent into it to turn that one around i mean are there people listening are there people whose lives are improving 100 percent, dude i get i get like messages dms and emails every day about how i'm saving people's lives i know that what i'm doing is is improving the lives of guys that are willing to 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 like swallow that jagged pill and do the work in their lives because I see the results that they get, but most people don't want that. They don't want accountability. They don't want the personal freedom. They just want the free shit. They want to be victims, right? It's like, you know, and I don't see that shifting back in the other direction. I still see it tilting more towards more victimhood, more free shit, higher taxes, you know, like more of the wokeness. So, you know, that's why I'm, uh, you know, I'm just sitting here going, yeah, okay, it's burning. I'm just going to put my feet up and enjoy it. You know, somebody wants to talk to me about a new business idea that they got, you know, selling cat food to cat ladies. I'll, you know, I'll hook them up, man. I'll fucking train them. Sure, absolutely, right? It's, it's, you know, it's just where I'm at. I love that, you know, that you're able to have a positive impact in, in the lives of, uh, you know, teenagers and, you know, boys mm -hmm. specifically, but you're an anomaly, right? Like it's, you know, the vast majority of the teaching population is, is liberalized, mostly female and feminized. Um, so like somebody like you stands out, which is great, but, um, you know, like you said at the beginning, it's like, you know, I can't show my face cause you know, this, that, and the other thing. So I get it, dude. It's just like, just do what you can. You know, that's why I say, you know, you draw your perimeter, you form your tribe and you do what you can. Yeah. And you have fun with it. Yeah. Makes All sense. right, man. Thanks, bro. All right. No problem. All, All right, let's start to wrap it up on that note. Let's see what else we got here. If I missed any supers. Uh, da, da, da. There's one for a poke or something. Uh, playing the devil's advocate here. Evil triumphs when good men do nothing. Evil triumphs when good men do nothing. When the West and its values decline, the world declines as a whole. Sure. So... If, uh, I mean, like you could use tyrants as an example, okay? Like Adolf Hitler was a tyrant, sure. There's a there's a Netflix uh, documentary on tyrants, you know, you can go look it up. Um, there's a bunch of them, you know, Mussolini, there's uh, Gaddafi, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and if people did nothing, then they would still be in power, there would still be problems, you know, in those countries. But um, if we're being honest here, though, it's like, OK, you have your own individual world that you can control. And we have tyrants here in the West. Like, I don't I don't care if you agree or not, but a guy like Trudeau is a tyrant. You know, he's you know, he's all about the she economy and the she recovery and this she session and my buddy, my my choice for women with abortions. But as soon as somebody says, hey, uh, I don't want a jab, it's like, nope, it's my it's it's the government's body. It's our choice. You have to take it. Otherwise, you're going to lose your job. Right. So we have. We have domestic issues that need to be dealt with, and I don't, I don't see people wanting to deal with them, right? So I, so I get it. I totally understand what you're saying here, but I don't see people getting behind changing that. Until I start seeing that, that's where we're at, right? I just hold up a mirror and point to the facts, right? I don't, I don't 
I don't play, you know, like rainbows and butterflies and, and hope. Uh, the West isn't worth saving. Take advantage of it because the elites in the West are doing the same. Preserving comfort is preserving one's enslavement. So you've got you've got two different angles here, right? You got the devil's advocate, and you got the guy that says it's not worth it. Preserving comfort is preserving one's enslavement. The elites, right? You know, the elites one that you hear quite a lot of. The elites, this and that, and the other thing. And look, I'm not saying that the elites are planning this. But let's also point to the obvious fact that Jeff Bezos has made a fuck ton of money in the last two years while stores had to shut down and he was able to send shit to people in the mail. Okay. Do they take advantage of it? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's what they do. Self-interest, right? It's like the government, self-interest. It's like they're it's like they're posing and holding out to the public that they care. But when you watch the behavior, it doesn't reflect that, right? Is it better to start your own business if you don't want to take the mandated poke at this time? Yeah, if you have if you have something, if you have a, a viable business model, sure. You don't have I mean, you've got more personal freedom being self-employed, but you also have more risk. You have more risk exposure. There's more work that's involved. The upside's bigger, but the risk factor goes up too, right? I just got a 100K job at 29. Rich, we in our way. Thanks, man. All right. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. And I got to go over to a Zoom from my community. Before I do that, I got to bounce out and hit to my channel sponsors. Where's my banners? There they are. So this is always pinned in the top after the show. You can go to coopersoap.com over here I'm trying to do this reverse thing over here uh ground like soap does pheromone infused handmade soaps beard oils and pheromone sticks you can go check it out all natural no endocrine disruptors in there which is important guys i've talked about this many many times before you can buy the cheap shit buy my my preference my advice to you is get something that doesn't have any kind of endocrine disruptors your benzones your fragrances all that nonsense in there that can mess that's why Scott supports the channel. And the Unplugged Alpha um, website is up. I talked about it a few episodes ago. You can just go to the website, use coupon code ALPHA10 to get 10% off your first order. Uh, I think it's episode number eight. If you go back to that, you can learn about all the supplements, why we put them in the lineup. I'll, I'll be talking about more of those in the future, but let's wrap her up. Hope you guys enjoyed the show and got something out of it. Leave a comment below, smash the thumbs up button. We'll be back next Monday with some more dopeness on the unplugged alpha podcast see you guys later peace out